welcome back to another video. So today I have Color It's brand new coloring book. They sent this to me to be able to share with you. This coloring book is called Colorful Novels and we are going to do a flip through of this coloring book today. But not only that, after we do the flip through, I am going to do a tutorial. Hopefully you already saw the video where I reviewed the 60 set of Color It alcohol markers. I posted that video a couple days ago. I'll link it in the upper right hand corner if you've not already seen it. But so many of you have been asking me for a tutorial where I use my colored pencils with alcohol markers. And so we're gonna use the color it alcohol markers in this book and I'm gonna show you how to layer your colored pencils over your alcohol markers to add all that extra added depth and dimension. If you check the description box down below, you'll find everything down there that you see in this video, as well as links to my Etsy shop, my Facebook group, my email list, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. And we're gonna go ahead and slide this out of the bubble wrap. Oh, bubble wrap, y'all know. If you've seen my unboxings before, y'all know how much I love bubble wrap. <laughs> It is such a stress reliever just sitting there and popping the little bubbles on those bubble wraps. So like with all of the Color It coloring books, they're always fantastic quality. You're gonna get 50 original hand-drawn designs in here. You always get 50 illustrations in all of their coloring books. They're gonna have the little Color It up here with, again, their adorable little butterfly. And then they all have the spiral binding up at the top so that the pages just flip back and forth very, very easily. The front cover is a very nice hard cover. And then when we open the book, the first thing I wanna bring your attention to is that all of the pages are perforated. And it is this way, again, with all of their coloring books. This one is book number 49. So if you go to their website or Amazon, you will notice that they do have a lot of choices for coloring books. So this is the first page and it's just going to give you a table of contents of all of the novels that the images came from that are contained within this coloring book. This page is your blotter page. Here you're gonna get your little QR code that you can scan with your phone's camera and it's gonna bring you directly to their website. So in this book, you're gonna get lots of captivating palettes inspired from colorful novels. Color your next masterpiece with these captivating palettes inspired from iconic books and characters. So in this coloring book, you're gonna get some sweet and romantic images, some playful and whimsical images. I see we have Alice in Wonderland there, and then moody and mysterious. For the sweet and romantic, it's just giving you a little blurb down here and giving you some ideas. It's telling you you could color those pages with some pretty pastels. So maybe you could get out like your castle art pastel tints or any of the other pastel sets you may have if you have the Holbeins or the Brute Food or Macaron set. Here we've got Playful and Whimsical. And then here it's just saying evoke a sense of whimsy by blending bright and muted blues, add in hues of pink and yellow for a touch of youthfulness and charm. And then over here for the moody and mysterious images, it's telling you to use darker colors with a more dramatic color palette. And it's giving you suggestions of mauve and hunter green, saturated blue and dusty pink. Add deep jewel tones mixed with charcoal black and brown for a gloomy and ominous vibe. Now for the moody and mysterious images, the first thing that popped into my head is possibly something like a metallic set. I know that the Castle Art metallic colored pencils, they have a lot of colors that would actually fit this theme that they're making this suggestion for here. So here we have our title page. Now the paper in these books is going to be thicker, so you could use several different mediums in here. If you are going to bring in your alcohol markers or water-based markers or any other kind of marker, acrylics, anything like that, I would suggest that you do go ahead and put something underneath the page. But this coloring book is going to be all images from different novels. And I'm gonna be switching back and forth just a little bit as we do the flip through because as with all Color It's books, some of the pages are landscape and some of them are going to be in portrait orientation. But the pages, like I said earlier, do flip with ease 
because of this wonderful spiral binding that we have on all of the books. And I definitely know this one. This is the Alice in Wonderland. This one is from 1984. It just says, Big Brother is watching you. This one says it's from 100 Years of Solitude. I'm reading off from the table of contents at the beginning of the book because a lot of these I am probably not familiar with. This one says it is from the novel Emma. Oh wow, I love the horses and then the windmills. Now see, these horses would be so fun to color if you were using your alcohol markers. If you laid down a layer of tan and then came in and laid your shadows with your colored pencils. This one is from the novel Things Fall Apart. Here we have Hamlet. We all know that one. <laughs> this one is from The Handmaid's Tale. This one is from Mrs. Dalloway. This is The Call of the Wild, The Goldfinch, and this one is from Lord of the Flies. This one is from The Age of Innocence, so we've just got some beautiful women in their gorgeous dresses shooting a bow and arrow. The Divine Comedy, this one has quite a few animals on it. That lion would be fun to color. That would be really cool to do with markers. This image is from The Brave New World. This one is from The Catcher in the Rye. Oh, and this one is from Gone with the Wind. Now we all know that one, right? Not Without Laughter. The Old Man in the Sea. Wow. <laughs> so if you wanted to practice coloring water, this would be a great one for that. And that would be really cool to do with your alcohol markers as well. And then use your colored pencils to come back and add all the details. This image is from The Color Purple. And this one, I know, this one has must be from Little Women. Yes, this one is Little Women. Again, we've got these girls in these gorgeous dresses. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. This one is from War and Peace. Wuthering Heights. And I just wanted to show you on this coloring book too, how nice it is just to flip the pages back like that. It was getting a little bit heavy the way that I had it. So I was able to just flip the pages right behind and it does really well with that. This is a really cool page with the buildings and such back here and you could make this horse the actual focal point of your page by just using a lot of contrasting color so that the horse really stands out from the background and those buildings. And then this one. Oh, this must be Dracula. I don't even have to look at that one. That's definitely Dracula. <laughs> This one is to the lighthouse. Oh, I love this image. This would be fantastic for a background. And that lighthouse would be super fun to color in alcohol markers as well. This would be a really quick color, this page here. And then you've got all this water here, which would also be really fun to color. And it actually has the waves all drawn in here already for you so that you can just come over those with white, with maybe like a white Posca pen or something like that to really emphasize those waves. This one is from Fahrenheit. 451. This one is For Whom the Bell Tolls. Oh, I love this page. Again, we've got this girl with this beautiful dress here, and she's just laying here reading a book, and he's over here doing a painting, and we've got lots of flowers and everything else on this page. I love when I have lots of flowers and trees and leaves to be able to color. Here's another one with lots of buildings in the background. There's quite a few like that in this book. This one is from David Copperfield. And this one is from the novel, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. This one has lots of trees. You've got the clouds back here so you could practice coloring your clouds. I have a tutorial on that on my channel if you want to practice coloring clouds. I actually have a couple of those, I believe. We've got the two little kids here just walking down the path. I love this page. Oh, and here we have elephants. This is one of my favorite animals to color, elephants and bunnies. This one is from the novel, A Passage to India. Oh, this has to be Charlotte's Web. Oh, I love that one. Look at the adorable little pig. <laughs> oh, I think I wanna color that. Oh my goodness. I love this page. This one is from the Count of Monte Cristo. And this is the last Im image, I believe. This one is from the novel Jane Eyre. And again, we've got this gorgeous dress. 
Oh my gosh, I love all the beautiful dresses in this book. And then here is the back cover, and the back cover has some beautiful artwork on it. I think that this was one of the pages that was inside the book, and then it just gives you a little burb here telling you which novels some of the scenes inside the book came from, like Moby Dick and The Odyssey and War and Peace. And so that was Colorful Images from Color It, and I will have the link for this book down in the description box below in case you're interested in grabbing this book for yourself and I am going to figure out a tutorial and I think we are going to go ahead and use our markers in the book and see if we could pick something in here to color. So now we're ready to go ahead and do the tutorial part of the video and I think that I am going to go ahead and color this Trojan horse from the novel The Aeneid. I pulled up some pictures online so I could see exactly what it looks like but I thought that this page or this Trojan horse would be perfect because there is so much detail and texture that is supposed to be on this horse. So this would be the perfect page to use to be able to show you how to add all that extra added texture and such when you're using your alcohol markers as your base layer. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pick a color and I'm looking at a picture of the Trojan horse from that novel on my screen in front of me. But it's basically just like a tannish brown color and then it has a whole lot of texture and then it has a few details where it's got a little bit of added very pale tannish yellow. And so I'm going to try to recreate that using my markers as a base layer and then bringing in my colored pencils and laying them right over the top. So the first thing we need to do is we need to choose a color. So I just went online and I pulled up some other pictures of the Trojan horse and it's looking like it looks much more like this pale olive that we have right here. So I may go ahead and use that color as a base layer and then I will come in and add all the extra added details and such with my colored pencils. So let's go ahead and find the pale olive. Okay, so I have my marker and we are gonna come in here and we're just going to go ahead and add our base layer all over the entire image. And did you all see what I forgot to do? I forgot to lay something underneath. And I just wanted to show you how much it actually does bleed through. So your markers are gonna bleed through, but look how great the paper is in these books because it didn't even get on the next page. But let me go ahead and grab my blotter page from the front of it. So with the Color It books, you always get this page here that is a blotter page. And then it tears off right here at the top. And then you can just use this page to lay under your coloring page. So you just put it right under there like that. So I'm gonna use that page just to protect the page underneath and we're gonna come back in here and just continue laying our base layer with our markers and look at me going out of the lines. I'm turning the book just a little bit because I feel like it might be a little bit easier. So I am noticing with these that I'm able to go to the edge of the line and the ink is not spreading on this paper. So that's really neat because a lot of times when I'm using my brush markers, I will lay them down and they will spread and go to the outside of the line. And then I always get so disappointed. <laughs> And then over here where you could see that it sort of messed up and then over here as well. I don't really worry about that because if I'm coming back with my colored pencils, I can always fix that. And that is the beauty of using your markers as a base layer and then coming back and using your colored pencils. When you're laying down your markers, you do have to be pretty quick. So I'm going to try not to go over these sections here with this color, the pale olive, because I think I'm going to grab another color for those. So I have to try to be really careful right here so that I don't end up in that area. And then down here underneath them as well. Okay, so I'm turning a little bit because I'm going to come back and go this way. And I think I'm going to go ahead and line the outside and then come back in. Okay, so let's finish the back part of the horse now. And then again down the legs, and I'm gonna just line the outside of these ropes here so that I don't come in that area and I can use another color for those. And then I need to make sure I get around the other objects here. 
and I probably should be using the fine tip of the marker. I think that worked just fine. If you just go really lightly and use the corner of the broader tip, it seems to be okay. And it looks like down here, I probably went the wrong direction with the marker, but that's okay. And that's the great thing about using markers with your uh, colored pencils because any of the areas like this where you went over twice or you went a different direction with your marker and you caused that overlap in the color you are going to come back with your colored pencils so all of that is just going to be covered up and you're not even going to notice it okay so now we just need to figure out which colored pencils we're going to use so i grabbed some colors out of my prisma color set and i don't know if i'm going to use every one of them but these were the colors that look like they're in the photo that I'm looking at online. So the colors I have are green ochre, 90% French gray, sepia, sandbar brown, putty beige, and I grabbed the 10% French gray to go along with the 90% French gray, just in case I wanna add some highlights somewhere and do my own little creative thing and make it look a little bit different than what I'm seeing online. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with the 90% French gray and how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to use all the lines on here to guide me as to where to lay the little bit of texture and so I'm going to take this color and I'm just going to go all around the entire image and I'm going to add some color right on top of all those spaces and you will see after you have your base layer of your markers and then you come back and start to add your Prisma colors or any other colored pencil that you may be using, you will see the huge difference in how the pencils go down. Now your Prisma colors are not necessarily usually going to go down really nicely on a smoother paper. They work much better on a paper that is toothier. But if you are doing something like this and you're using the alcohol markers as a base layer, it makes it much easier to lay the Prismacolors right on top because they don't move around as much. And you can see in some of those places where I lay down my markers, but I sort of had the colors overlapping like over here, you could see how that's not going to matter as much now that I'm laying down the colored pencils. And I'm gonna go through this whole entire image and I'm going to do this and I'm going to speed this part up so that y'all could just see it all come together. see already how much extra added texture or depth just adding that one prisma color changed to this entire image so now I'm going to come back with the 90% French gray and I'm going to go all around this horse and anywhere I see one space meeting with the other or even a little bit of a mess up with the alcohol markers like right in here I'm going to go ahead and go right along that line and I'm going to add even more depth to the horse and while I'm doing that I'm going to speed that up so that you all could see it come together. French gray and I just went over all of the areas where I wanted to create more depth 
I laid it in all of the places. It looks like I actually missed some places. I don't have to come back and do that. But I laid it in all of the places where one section was meeting another section just so that I could make those two sections look like they were separated from one another and to lift one of the sections. Like all down in here, I made sure I added that darker color where this is one section here and then this is another section here. And then in between each one of these slats on the horse, I made sure I tried to separate them and then I try to where most of these lines are in between all of the slats I try to come in and define those and add a little bit of color on each side of those and it looks like I missed some of these as well but that's okay I'll come back and do that so the next thing that I'm going to do is I have my golden yellow marker and I'm gonna come over here because I had forgotten to do that, but I'm gonna come over these ropes and I'm gonna use the fine tip to do this. But this looks most similar to the color that I'm looking at online for this Trojan horse. So I'm just gonna fill all of these in and of course I'm gonna come back and I've already got my color chosen, what I'm gonna use to add a lot of extra depth to these and go over them again with my colored pencils. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing to these. And I think our horse needs a little bit more color and we need to come back and blend some of these areas out. And so I have my sandbar brown and I'm gonna use this color just to come in here. Let's see how it looks. Test it out just a little bit. But yeah, I'm gonna come through here and I'm just gonna blend a lot of this color out and you can see how it just really blends right in there and pulls that color out everywhere and makes it look a little bit more natural. And then after that, I'm probably gonna come back with a highlight color to add a little bit more depth and dimension to the horse. But first I need to blend all of these out. You never wanna leave any harsh lines when you're using colored pencils, you wanna make sure that all your colors are actually blended out. And I just felt like these two colors together made a really great combination on top of the color that I chose for my alcohol markers or for the base of the horse with the alcohol markers. But you can see how it just blends out so beautifully on this paper using the alcohol markers as a base. And I'm not pulling it all the way down because I do want to leave that color from the marker there and use that as a highlighted area. And I won't even necessarily need to come back with a highlight color and fill those in because that's what I'm using the base color of the markers for. But sometimes I do like to come back and add a little bit of something with my colored pencils as well. But all this is doing is just spreading the color out and I'm using another color that is fairly close to the color that I originally used. I especially wanna blend out these areas where I used that other color, the 90% French gray, to line those sections just to create that separation. I definitely wanna go over all of those areas. And I think I am gonna do a little bit of my own creative thing and come back with some color just to add a little bit of highlights here. And you could see I had much thicker color laying all throughout here. And so I'm just going over that as well and spreading that out as well as down here. And you could see down here, if you remember at the beginning of the video where I used the alcohol marker and it messed up just a bit, you can see how that colored pencil just really fixed all of that. So if you're working with alcohol markers and you are new to alcohol markers, I don't use alcohol markers like a whole lot. So I still feel like I'm still rather new to alcohol markers myself. And so if that is you, know that you don't need to worry about it because like I tell y'all all the time, everything is fixable. I was able to use my colored pencils and just go right over it so I didn't have to worry about it looking like there was a mistake. And I even went out of the lines in some places and I don't ever really worry about things like that. I just keep coloring and I know some of you that are in my Facebook group, I see posts all the time and you get so frustrated when you do something like go out of the lines or you wanna know how to fix things and things like that. I just, I don't ever worry about it because 
everything is always fixable. There's always a way to fix anything, no matter what you do. Now, if you were to take a bunch of ink and spill it across your entire coloring page, <laughs> that is a little bit more catastrophic. <laughs> And I probably wouldn't know how to fix that. But little minor errors, like going out of the lines and such, don't ever worry about things like that because you can fix that. There's erasers and all sorts of other things that will remedy those little tiny mistakes. <laughs> lights to my horse. He already looks like he has a whole lot of depth and dimension just with the few things that I did. So I'm going to grab my 10% French gray just to sort of stick with the color family that I've been using. If you remember I used the 90% French gray so we're going to come back with the 10% French gray. I'm just going to go around in all the different areas of the horse and I'm going to go through and I'm going to add a bit of a pop of highlight with this 10% French gray. And as I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up again so that y'all could just see it all come together because it's gonna take me a little while. So now I'm gonna come back and I'm just going to go over all of these areas where there's those lines just to emphasize those lines just a little bit more and add another layer and you will see it just really start to pop off the page. It already has a whole lot of extra added depth and dimension with just the few things I did and when I came back in, in here and added the extra highlight color with that 10% French gray, it I feel like it really just made it pop just a little bit more. It also added a little bit of contrast between the other colors I used as well as the base layer of the color that we used of the alcohol marker. So I think my horse is looking really, really good. To me, when I look at this, he looks very steampunky or like a steel colored horse. I think he looks so super cool but I decided that I wanna come back, and I think this is Deco Yellow, it's PC1011, and I'm just gonna go around the horse, and I'm just going to add a pop of this color just to give him a little bit of yellow in there, and then I'm gonna to have to come back and add some shading and shadows to these little ropes that are around his legs here. <laughs> Okay, so that's done. So now we're going to come back and we are going to add some dimension to these here. For that, I'm going to go ahead and use my dark brown. And I know I picked a lot of colors in the beginning and I was just trying to match up some of the colors and I knew I wouldn't use them all but I just wanted to make sure that I had all the colors laid out that sort of matched up to my base color of my alcohol marker and I also wanted to make sure that my colors some of the colors that I had were a little bit contrasting from the color that I used for my base layer it's much easier to have that base layer of the alcohol marker because I feel like that base layer really helps the colored pencils or my Prismacolor specifically to really just adhere to that paper and not move around as much and it makes the Prismacolors much more workable. So now I have my Jasmine and I'm just going to blend this color out just a little bit and that just added a little bit of depth and dimension to the ropes that are around the horse's legs. But I think the horse is finally done. Well, on these little circles here, I had intended to get a gel pen and go in there with some gold or something, but I'm not even sure that we really need to do that because I really like the way the horse looks now without adding that. I might add it a little bit later and see how it looks, but I really love how this turned out. And you can see that by adding a base layer of markers and coming over it with your colored pencils, especially if you're using a smoother paper, it gives it a really, really cool look. And I feel like my horse sort of looks like he is a steel horse 
and you can see all the added extra depth and dimension because I made sure I lined all the separate sections and this was a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. I was going to do a smaller image and then this one just really stood out to me and I remember when I was flipping through the book I was like oh wow that horse. <laughs> and so if I were to color the rest of this page I would make sure that all the rest of the page I used different colors and colors that contrasted from what I did on the horse so that the horse remained the focal point of the page. So I hope you all enjoyed this flip through and review of the coloring book and then the tutorial that I added on. I don't usually do them like this. I've done a couple like this and they were pretty popular, so I decided to do another one instead of adding this book to my massive coloring book haul and flip through review videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, and if you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel. And everything you've seen in the video will be linked in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.